with uh, just this, and then we'll worry about the second half of the problem in a second. Um, so, distributive, your, prop distributive property. I'm going to go with that first in just a second. But if you're having trouble getting started, remember that these letters represent numbers, and they behave just like numbers do, because they are numbers. So they will behave, exact, behave exactly like numbers do. So if you need some help, just throw in random numbers that you think of, and then follow the same kind of steps. So if I put 3 in there for A, and for X is what we're solving for, but that's 5 equals 7, whatever, just throw some numbers in there. And then whatever you do in this case, you do over here in this case. So what would you do in this case? What would you do to get X by itself? 3 times X. 3 times x, 3 yeah. times 5, yeah. distributive property, right? ax plus ab equals c, just like 3x plus 15 is what I would get when I distribute the 3. It's just a times b doesn't equal like f or something. Like b. It just is a times b. Still trying to get x by itself. If you need to go over here and think, what would I do next? Minus ab. Minus ab, just like I would do minus 15 here. I'll do minus, this is just a number, just a constant number. AX equals C minus AB. Then what? You divide AX plus X. Divide by AX? Oh no, yeah, kind of. Divide by A. Yeah, just yeah. A, just A. Just like uh, about 3X equals negative Negative 8, I would divide by 3 at that point. Not 3x, but just 3. Cancel out the 3. <laughs> um, a will cancel A. X equals C minus AB over A. That is all. Okay. What the other part of the problem is asking you to do. Notice when I threw those numbers in there, I did the same exact thing with the numbers that I did with the letters. So if those numbers were there, they would all wind up like in this expression, in this arrangement. If it were, as in problem four says, two times x plus one equals nine. This guy here, that's where a used to be. This b has been replaced with one, c has been replaced with nine. Let's go down here and make all those substitutions. c is nine. A is 2, B is 1, and C is, oh sorry, A again is 2. So we have 9 minus 2 is 7, over 2. Okay. Are we trying to get you to do that because it's the easiest thing to do? It's the easiest way to solve that problem? Of course not. It would just be easier to have numbers in there from the start and solve it that way. The point is not to show you some cool, easy shortcut like the, the internet. It's trying to show you gradually baby steps towards being able to solve a more complicated equation uh, that has variables all throughout it. Uh, and if we have some time, I'll show you. I was watching a video on uh, a YouTube channel called Number File where a guy had to do just that. He wanted to, in general, say if I have two circles that have a radius of r, how big of a thing do I have to cut out to make this shape? And that's a pretty cool shape. So, uh, I will show you that if we have time, so that's up to you. Um, okay, so that was four. We're on to uh, 11, 14. Um, let's choose uh, two of those. Let's get rid of either 11, 14, or 19. Let's get rid of 11. I'll choose four of you if you don't choose. How about 14? Get rid of it? Wait, no. Uh, which one to get rid of? Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Okay, maybe that's the easiest one. We'll go to 14 and 19. The other ones, perhaps. 18x minus 2y equals 26. Yes? I don't know what to do. Oh, you know what to do. Okay, well, let's just get right <laughs> I know into it. Let's get right into it. Go ahead. Subtract 18x from both sides. We're trying. When it says. Write y as a function of x. 
Well, let's solve for y, and I'll show you why that's what we're doing. We're getting y by itself. Okay, so we get negative 2y equals, all you can do is 26 minus 18x. Don't do 26 minus 18, right? They're not both numbers. 26 is a number, 18 is attached to x, so 18x is actually like a variable altogether. All right? And then you divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. So y equals negative 13 plus 9x. So divide everything by negative 2. Everything out here. Um, you see. Okay. Eager and correct. Okay. Um, so, remind me what a function is. When I say function, what does that mean? Yes. Um, it's an input and output. Input output machine, right? You just put something in, you get something out. Uh, I can put something in for x here, right? And figure out what y is, but I have to go through all of these steps. Okay. So when we say y as a function of x, we really mean y on one side and x and everything else on the other side. Why is that? Because if a function is an input output machine, isn't it easier to just plug something in for x when it looks like this? Yeah, we plug something in for x. Do all the stuff on the right side, do all that arithmetic, and then there's no solving for y. Y is solved for. So whatever we number we get on this side, that's what y is. That's what the output is. Okay. So when y is a function of x, we mean y is by itself on one side. <coughs> number 19. 2 plus 6. be annoying and, and uh, would you? No, would you? Like, it's up to you. Yeah. Would I? Yeah, no. If subtract, you're asking what I would do? Subtract two on each side. Okay, subtract two on both sides. Can we, what can we do on both sides? What are we allowed to do? Or we can subtract four on both sides or subtract two. Those are our only options? No, we can actually do You can do anything. You can do anything. You can do anything you want. But a lot of those things won't make any sense, and they won't make it look any easier. Well, and it's better to get y by itself. Yeah. Yeah, so if we subtract 4, then y won't be yeah. closer to being by itself. And that we get there, but it would take more steps. Yeah. So if we subtract 2, if we do, if we choose to, that's a good idea because, as Faith said, y will be more by itself. Okay. Uh, all right. Now next. Uh, divide by six. Divide by six. The whole thing. All of it. Y equals three x plus two over six, or uh, three over six times x plus two over six, or one half x plus one third. You got, if you're going to divide one side by something, you're going to divide everything on that side by whatever it is, by 6. Right? All right. Doing, doing all this brings up a, a good topic of discussion. Let's say we had a 2y equals 2x minus 3. So we would solve for y. We would divide by 2, right? Right. Right, Zach? Yep. Okay. So y would be 2x minus 3 over 2. Can we write y equals x minus 3? Uh, no. Just x minus 3? No. Who says, I'm not quite sure why you can't do that. I'm not sure why that's not x minus 3. Oh, yeah. Not quite sure? Yeah. You can't. You can't divide by 2. You can write x, but it would be x minus, do you know? Dimitri? Over two? Exactly. You have to divide everything by two. Okay. I have this little thing over here, I call it the weeping kitten theorem. No. Okay. No, not so no. canceling out that two just like that, just from those two terms, is what's happening here. Just canceling out two things because they look the same. That makes somewhere a okay. kitten weeps. No. When did you do that? You know, because it's 
makes it so sad when you do things like that. I don't okay like that. Reduce irrational expression and correct. I'm kind of okay with that because I have a friend like him crying to be incredibly cute. Oh, dude, <laughs> I would love that. I would just pick it up and just know what I Okay, well, let's get down to why can you not just cancel those two out? Let's look at a situation where we can do something like that and why it's confusing us in this situation. Like, get one that works out well. So like six over um, fifteen. Can we? So, so you see how you're crossing out this two? Can you cross something out here? No. No, you can't. You can divide by three. Three, and you you got your you hit the nail on the head. Dividing by three, right? It's three. Let's start with goes into six, and it goes into fifteen. So we, we cross those things out. It's like we're trying to cross these things out, but we're getting confused. We don't really understand what's happening over here. That's why we're making the mistake over here. Okay, so what do we, we get two over five. Two over five. Okay? We don't quite fully grasp what's happening here, otherwise we wouldn't make this mistake over here. So we're, we're canceling out a factor of three, right? And that's, that's kind of a loaded statement. It's a factor of three. Please stop talking, even whispering, especially when you're trying to back so. We're canceling out a factor of three. Is six a factor of three? No. Yes. Or sorry, is three factor six? Yes. How do you know for sure? What's that? It goes into it. Okay, what does that mean exactly? Three can go into six. Three times two. That's exactly what it means. Right? You're right, and then exactly what it means is three is a factor of six because three times two is six. If I'm trying to cancel out this two here, is two a factor of two? Down here in the denominator? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. Is two a factor, not of just this guy, but the whole numerator, right? Just like six is the whole numerator here. Is it a factor of the whole numerator? No. No. It's, it's not two times a, a whole thing. It's just two times x, and we have this minus three. All right, so that's, that's six, six is three times two. It's a factor of 15 as well, because that's three times five. I'm gonna write something here. You tell me if it's the same or if it's different. These two fractions multiplied together, is that the same as these two, this one fraction right here with three times two in the numerator, three times five in the denominator? Yes. Why? Because they convince us all. Um, they're both being multiplied by each other. You had three pieces of pizza, and then you had two out of five pieces of pizza, and you kind of like. I don't know, I'm sorry. It's hard to. Make. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just me? Uh, because for the top one, three times two is six, and then three times five is fifteen, so it'd be six over fifteen, and then the bottom one, three times two is six, and five times three is fifteen. Yeah, because we, when we have two fractions and we're multiplying them, we multiply them out. Straight across. Right? So these two fractions multiplied together is the same as this one fraction with the factors together in the numerator and denominator, which is the same as this fraction, which is just 6 over 15. So what's really happening when we cross out this, we just cross it out, is we're saying this is equal to this, and what's 3 divided by 3? 1. 1. What are we doing here? We got 1 times 2 fifths. So what's 1 times 2 fifths? You might think that I'm like overstating it or trying to oversell it or just being too detailed. But I see this mistake all the time. If we really understand this, we would never make this mistake. All right. I can't write this that way. I can't write it. If I want to cancel out a 2, I can't write it as 2 over 2 times. Well, I can write a 1 down there. I'm trying to write it like I am here. But I have to do 2 times, well, x. But I have to distribute this. I have to distribute it to something that 2 times something gives me 3. 2 times what is 3? 1.5. 3 halves. OK, so look at that. That's what we round up with right there. And we cancel out the 2 from both sides. Now we can cancel out the 2s, and we get x minus 3 halves. Or if you want to think of it differently, 
everything in the numerator has to get divided by the denominator, so make sure that that happens. Let's go on to the next one. That was number 19 on number 20. Finally, the uh, leaping kitten theorem. Volume of rectangular prism. Uh, how do they write it? L, W, H. Solve for W. We need W by itself. If you need a little bit of a, a, a help, just throw in some numbers for L and H and see what you would do if those numbers were there. Let's say L was 5, there's W, H is 7, let's say. Well, what's five W? What's what's in between the W and the seven? One. But what operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. Okay. So it's really five times W times seven. So what would I do to get rid of the five and seven? Multiply them together. You can multiply the five and seven no, together. Add them together. Add them together. Yeah. Multiply or add. Add. Multiply. Multiply. Let's multiply straight across, right? Right. So you do seven times five. Okay. So what? Right? We can kind of do that over here. We can just write the L times the H, or, yeah, and then times the W, and treat this like one number, like 35, yeah? Why didn't you put the H after the 7? Because it's I'm not, I'm replacing H with 7. Oh, oh, okay. Just to say, like, if you need a little help, just throw some numbers in there for, the, for everything that's not what you're solving for. Okay. And then what would I do? I get W by itself. Divide by 35. Divide by the thing that's multiplied by W. Right. So in this case, it's 35. But in general, we would just divide by what? LA. Oh, LA. LA. V over LH. That's W. Treat those letters just like numbers. They act exactly the same way. If, it, if you're adding something you want to get rid of it, subtract it out of there. Subtract it from that side. If it's being multiplied, divide it out of there. Pass the normal work, please. Let's just store it with your favorite color. Not too, not too crazy. Trying to get L by itself. It's being multiplied with W. We want to cancel out the W. By doing what? them by negative 5. So 20 divided by negative 5 would be negative 4. That, that cleans up nicely. Uh, negative 2 divided by negative 5, that's positive 2 fifths times x. Okay. Easier the other way. Yes? Yeah, that's easy. Well, maybe, depending on what you want to use it for. Like, does this look familiar? Yeah. Yeah, slope and wider so. So if we want to know the slope and y intercept, we probably want to get it like this. Yeah. yeah. So it just depends on how you want to use it. All right. So um, 
You're going to look at somebody else's work? Oh, sorry. Okay, so number four. Yeah. They did all the work, but they solved for the wrong, like. For this or three? They solved for, oh, three. Okay. Solved the wrong. No, four, sorry. Oh, oh so the one I was on. do four, so never mind. This one. Yeah. Okay. Or not this one. I'm sorry. Is I it? Yeah, well, I would say if they solved the, the wrong one correctly, this four out of five. Oh, Such so a one you gave us for four. No? Yeah. No. no. That's five. Oh, that's five. This is. Oh, we're on four, is that? Yeah. And then that's five. So what's this one? Oh. 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 Oh
to understand? Is he talking over me? No. Don't think it is. Um, so I see some common mistakes, and I just wanted to talk about them. I see this kind of mistake in the, in the blue um, in the blue stuff. What's the issue there? What are they trying to do, and why can't they do it? Are they trying to pretend like it's dividing, like trying to cross it off, but it's not like they're trying to do it. Okay, I see what you're saying. What do you say, Dylan? What do you say? Those are in parentheses. Okay, you can't just cherry pick things out of the parentheses. Kristen? Well, you have to like do the distributive property before you can multiply anything that's in the. That's a good point. They're, they're multiplied by two, so we got to respect that multiplication by two in some way. And the easiest way would be go ahead and distribute. So, how about the green step? <laughs> Wait, what? I got it. I got it, bro. Oh. Wait, what? Go ahead. Oh, they didn't um, multiply the 6 by 3. Uh, they didn't fully totally distribute that 6 three. plus 18. And that happens a lot when things are going too fast and you just didn't pay close enough attention, or maybe you'll do 3 times 6 is uh, 9, so or fun. you just got to slow down. So yeah, we can distribute the three. Let's look at it again. We'll look at a different mistake. A very common mistake. So distributed the two, all that good stuff. Down to this red stuff. What do we do? Can we get Kristen? Um, they have to divide it instead of subtract. I was surprised to. I was surprised to find how often people were taking three x and subtracting three to cancel out the three. Think about three x equals twelve. Wait, I don't. Hmm? Wait, why do why do you have that? But that's wrong. This is wrong. Tell us why it's wrong. It says on the side what mistake did Gino make in the red set. Yeah, I know. That's better. Okay, okay, I'll find it. So, at the very end, we've got 3x equals 12. So it's all green, it's all good, until 3x equals 12. We should divide by 3. Does it see it's multiplied by 3? I want to, quote, undo the multiplication. So I do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. I have a group of three bags on this side and 12 on this side. I'm going to divide both sides by three rather than subtracting. Subtracting three from 3x has no meaning, really, no effect on it. 3x minus 3 is just 3x minus 3. It doesn't cancel out the 3. So this is more what a person's work should look like. For the answer? Yep. Actually, please. Or number five, right? Yes. Yeah, your, yours reads number five. Yeah, I'll score you in a second. So, what did the work and didn't care, right? Um, <laughs> So here's an equation that we've been seeing this mistake more and more. Right. So 
person's kind of mixing up two ideas. This is Kia. Kia is apparently a person's name. going on in this person's head. They, they see a 3x and they're like, oh, I want to, maybe I feel like they want to move it over here. I'm not sure exactly what, what's going on there. But they're, they're subtracting 3x, so let's look at the two different things they're trying to do. Either they're going to subtract 3x, okay, so if they subtract 3x, how would that go? They'd have to subtract 3x on the other side. On the other side. So if we're subtracting 3x to cancel out this positive 3x, we should subtract 3x on the other side. Soil. Love uh, Or if they're going to try and combine the 5x with the 3x, they should just use the signs the way they are. They're both on the same side. Right? This would be like we have. So you can see, subtracting 3x, they'd be like taking three bags off of this side. OK, well, I'll just move them down here. But if they subtract 3x from the 3x, and then they subtract 3x from the 5x. It'd be really 6x. Yeah, they've just taken six bags off one side and done nothing the other side. It really I messed up the other side. OK, super, super unbalanced. Now, if I were to subtract 3x from one side, I have to subtract 3x from this. There's no x's to subtract. Right? It'd be kind of a silly, silly thing to do. We like it when one side doesn't have any x's, doesn't have any bags on one side. We like it to be that way. So all we really have is five bags here, three bags over there, and some coins in between. So if we just put these over here, right? we have eight. Okay. Yeah, eight of them. Right. I think if you, if you think of it in that way, it represents two balanced amounts. You realize oh, it's, it's saying that I just got five of them here, three of them over here, they're on the same side. I'm just going to collect them into one place so if there's eight of them. So uh, it should look more like 8x plus 9 equals 13 in that step. If you want to subtract 3x from both sides, you could. You would get 5x plus 9 on one side and 13 minus 3x on this side. We have to get the x's to be back on the same side, right? And it'd be an extra step. So, we wouldn't do that. Then subtract 9, 8x equals 4, x equals 1 half. Same equation, different mistake. So now we put them together, 8x, and we get 9, and then we, well, what did we do? In, the, in this previous one, we subtracted 9 from both sides, but this is something I see a lot. Subtract 13 from both sides, got 8x minus 4 divided by 8, 8x, 8, 8x, x equals negative 1 half. Technically, up till here, it's still correct. Yeah. It's just missing something. What's it missing? Let me try 
by eight x. That means eight. No. True. Uh, it's not. It's missing an equal sign. It is making missing an equal sign. What's on the other side of the equal sign? Zero. What's thirteen minus thirteen? It's nothing. So we've taken everything off of one side. Everything's collected over here together on this side. We can still divide by 8 on both sides. It's only that it's not x equals negative 1 half. It's x minus 1 half equals 0. 0. Still equals 0. So I could add half to both sides and again, x equals 1 half. divided by itself. The 8 divides the 8. That's 1. The x divides the x. That's also 1. Right? There's no x's left. It's 1 equals 64 over 8x. It's still true, but now x is in the denominator. It's all kinds of messy. I, I really need to choose to do that, because now I have to deal with this x in the denominator, which is a whole new deal. So what do we do about that? So I would, I would just forget about all that. Remember, I'm trying to cancel out everything else but the x. We got 8 times x. If I want to cancel out that multiplication by 8, I'll divide by 8. And x equals 8. And 64 divided by 8 is 8. Oh, I see what you did there. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. So those were just some mistakes I was seeing as I was grading quizzes or, or reviews or whatever. And it was just, just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention and, and show you that if you're making those mistakes, you're making them along with several other people. Hopefully now we're not going to make those mistakes. Okay, so let's get out our notes and everything, make sure we have those out. All right, so here is a light pole. Here it is, a human. Here's that human shadow, okay? Um, I will tell you that, uh, say this shadow is 13 feet, and this man is six feet. Also say that this distance all the way from here to the tip of the shadow, let's say that's 37 feet. So now to ask you to figure out how tall this lamp is. plus b squared equals c squared. Let's, let's investigate that. Same. same. Thank a squared times b squared is the same as a squared plus b squared. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no, no. <laughs> okay. Just turn the plus a little bit sideways. Okay. Well, what does that mean? It means 
Pythagorean theorem. It's Pythagorean theorem. Okay, what's A mean? Like six? Yes. Yeah. And B would be? 13. 13. And C would be? This thing? Yes. Yeah. Did I ask you about that? No. You have to find the hypotenuse. You have to. You must find the hypotenuse. You find the hypotenuse. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to find the hypotenuse. Ah, cool. This is 24. What's that? <laughs> Guessing? That sign is a problem. How'd you get 24? Just 37 minus 37. Because. <laughs> because. Don't judge by methods. Okay. Yeah. So that's 24. So because you took this distance here minus this distance, that means that that's that distance? Yeah. Why? that if you guess the right number, I'm going to say yes, and no. victory will be shattered, and then we'll move on? No. Two. Okay, so maybe guessing is what I'm looking for. Five. Um, so, but I'm, I'm going to take advantage of something that Drew noticed, and that is that that's a triangle. We can take that to be a triangle, where the man is, is the vertical part, and the shadow is the horizontal part, and the hypotenuse is... Well, it's like a, what does this red thing represent? The light. Yeah, the light coming out of that thing. Right. Of course, that, that light coming right across the top of your head, that is kind of where the shadow ends. Right? It makes a difference between the shadow and the light. Um, so that's a triangle. Do you see any other triangles? Uh, yeah? Well, if you don't count that guy, you don't count the guy, so we'll just cover up the guy for a second. Yeah, then that's also a big triangle. That giant thing with the guy inside of it, that is also a triangle. Oh, I don't like the triangle. You think these triangles are related to each other? Mm -hmm. Same angles. Same angles? They have right angles. They both have right angles? They have all the same angles? Can you prove it? Well, it's all one. All one line. Oh, okay. Do you want to go into more detail? Oh. Oh. Dylan is just way more excited. Dylan? Oh, I'm ready. Hey, I don't know what the word's called, but it's like a vertex or a vertice. It's like the vertex. angle. Yeah. There's an angle over here. Yeah, what's that what's that angle called? Like oh. what is called an angle? Like what is it called like a vertex or something? The all the angles of the uh, the triangle are called vertex. Yeah, they have the same vertex. Oh, so they share an angle. Yeah. So I just said, you're still excited. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, but you did. did. So, 37 is the whole angle? Not angle, angle, but the whole side. And that whole yeah. like side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so 13 is part of that, so 13 plus something has equal to 27. Sure, and, and, uh, and Brent found it, it's 24, right? But that's the horizontal distance. Destiny? Okay, um, the triangles are similar. Triangles are similar. Very good, that's the word. Very good. Yeah, that's the word. Triangles are similar. What does that mean that they're similar? The angles are the same. It's like the same shape, but they're 
they aren't exactly the same. They share things in common, but they're not quite exactly the same. They are very, they are, some things are exactly the same and some things are different, actually. It's the same angles, but like different, like, size. Oh, oh. Right? They're different sizes. Like, one is like a different size version of the other. You look at the smaller one, the bigger one's a bigger version. Like, you're just kind of like zoomed in on it more, right? Do you have more to say? Okay, so it's like, uh, if this is a certain size and, and this one is a certain size, like, uh, this, one, this big one could be just like twice as big as this smaller one. Or another way to think of it is like, if this is a certain length, and this long side of this triangle is twice as big, then all parts of that triangle are twice as big. Right? Except for the angles, they're exactly the same. So Mrs. Stewart, when you're, this is kind of off topic, but oh boy. So when you're like scrolling down the street and stuff, and you're just looking around, are you like making that Sometimes I do, sometimes I, not as often as when you might be thinking. Um, I wouldn't say that I make equations, but I do think of things mathematically, meaning like systematically and breaking them down, not necessarily into the numbers, but into uh, maybe smaller pieces. Well, with equations, like, Well, let's say like this was 13 and this was 26, then how much bigger would the big triangle be? Double. Double. And everything would be double, right? So this would be double, right? So if this was 13, if this was 13 and this was 26, well, if this was 6 then, then how tall would that be? 12. Right. Everything would, would scale up exactly the same. Because 26 over 13 would be 2, right? And the same would be true of this question mark over 6. That would also be true. But that's the property of similar triangles. They're similar because they are proportional to each other. Okay? So I want you to try to figure out what the question mark is exactly when I tell you this. Really, I think, remind you about this. For similar triangles, just in general, Let's say that these triangles are similar. One's just smaller than the other. Let's call this little a, and little b, and little c. And this big A, big B, big C. They're proportional to each other. It means if you compare similar parts of the triangles, they come out to be equal. Like, for instance, uh, big C, the hypotenuse of the big triangle, and little c, the hypotenuse of the small triangle. C over little c, what's that equal to? No, not always one. It's like if, if this triangle is twice as big, C over C would be two. That would be the same as A over little a, yeah, or B over little b. Right. Right. So basically all the angles are the same, they're the same, but the sides are different lengths. Right, that's true. But they're different lengths in, in this particular way, where the ratio of this hypotenuse, this hypotenuse is the same as this long leg to this long leg. Or we can go like within the same triangle. We could do like big A over big C. What would that be equal to? Little A over little C. Little A over little C. So we can set up these ratios, these, well, they're called proportions. A proportion is when you set one fraction equal to another fraction. So set up the proportions to solve them. So let's set up a proportion that has, let's just call it x, because we always use x, right? Let's just call it x. That has x in it. So then when we solve it, we get x by itself, then we know how tall that lamppost is. By the way, you could use the same trick for like really, really tall things. Right about it. Maybe he's not using the same thing as this. Maybe he is. 
don't know, we like measure a tree or something. But if you do, yeah, you can measure a tree. If you measure your distance, I mean, I, I could have told you this was 37 just as easily as I told you this distance is 24. Right, 24 plus 13 is just 37. But yeah, if you measure your distance and you measure your shadow and you know how tall you are, you know how tall the tree is. You use similar triangles. So, have we solved for x or have we just talked while you listen? All right, solve for x. All right, I see some confusion out there, so let's. Yeah, I don't even know. I have a question. What I was doing. Why did you click with Zoom recording? Are you like recording this? I'm recording the screen. This is how I record all the lectures I on YouTube. Um, so he would have just said Uh, so, with similar triangles, which these two triangles are, they are similar to each other. If I take this hypotenuse over that hypotenuse, that's equal to the ratio of say this long side, this long side. They're, the, they're both the you know vertical part of each of these triangles. Um, or if I take this vertical side over the hypotenuse uh, in the big triangle, it'll be equal to the same ratio, the, the, the short side here over the hypotenuse. So you can use that idea here, right? Like x, right? That's this tall side here, this vertical side here. x over x, okay, the vertical side here over 6. There, those are two like similar parts of the similar triangle, two correlated oh, parts. Nice. X over six equals uh, okay. twenty-four over thirteen. Thirteen. I don't know about well, uh, over twelve uh, thirty-seven. Not twenty-four over thirteen, because twenty-four is just from here to here. Thirty-seven over thirteen. You see how that's not yeah. that's just part of that triangle. The whole triangle thirty-seven. So thirty-seven over 13. See what I'm saying there? We're using similar triangles, we're putting similar pieces into ratios and setting those ratios equal to each other. It's a property of similar triangles that we may have never heard of, or maybe we're just getting reminded of. Or maybe we knew that already. Okay, so let's take that ratio over to a piece of into this little thing here. X over Six equals thirty-seven over is it thirteen. Okay. Solve this proportion. Yeah, this is the kind of approach you would want to use. It'd probably be the easiest way to measure okay. very, very tall things. Yeah. Is it kind of like your percentage? So you take six times thirty-seven and divide by thirteen. Uh. Like cross products. Cross products. Oh, okay. So we've heard all cross product before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cross product would be what? Thirty-seven times six. 37 times 6 divided by 13. Divided by 13, yeah. Yeah. Equals x? Yeah. Now what? Is that a memorization thing or is that a, like, a yeah. math thing? We just know it. We know it. We know it. I, I, I remembered it because of percentage. It's if you have like, like is over of equals percentage over of <laughs> Alright, well we're gonna you're not wrong. That is correct. But uh, we're gonna advance beyond that a little bit. Okay. Let me just show you how we can easily you can easily tra transition from this equation to this one. Okay. If I had x over six equals five, how would I get rid of this six? Multiply by six. Multiply by six. Multiply by six. X equals thirty. So, can we please stop talking? Okay. If you want to cancel the six here, same idea. Multiply by six on both sides. Six is cancel. This is just a fraction of 6 over 1. We multiply straight across. 37 times 6 over 13. So, that 
trying to blow your minds here or anything. It's not that much more difficult. But we're seeing how uh, you can get there by just doing that algebraic approach of do the same thing to both sides. Dimitri? Then would we like solve it? Like actually do the 37 times 6 divided by 13, or would we just leave it like that? You can't leave it like that? Look, let's get an idea of how big that is, though. Uh, is your guess big. right? Is it 12? Is it, how big is it? That's around 400. Times six. Five, four, one eighty, three, six, 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 well, yeah, it's probably decimal data. It just keeps on going. All right. So, 17.07, that's how tall this light bulb is. Yeah. Uh, when they're making it, why don't they just make it even? The light post? Yeah. I don't know. And it was made? Maybe it's in metric, and in centimeters it is even. Maybe when the sun hits it, it expands. Yeah. Sun's hitting it. What are you guys talking about? Gotta watch out for those things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's metal expands like it's hot. Just a, not really a important question, but say you wanted to measure how tall a building was, and here you are. Yep. Very tiny compared to the building. Oh, well, that's kind of. <laughs> now, how would I use the same idea if, if Wait, that's me? Where's the sun? <laughs> where's the sun? The sun is right. Just the angles, say, yeah. you know, shining down. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So how would you use this trick if you wanted to measure the, the height of the building? It's not the building is not a lamp post. If you're gonna pass it, just pass it to her. Watching you pass this thing back and forth. Whole class. If it's shining down like this, it's not a it's not a lamp post, it's not shining a light. The light source is the sun, right? right? So how do we use this little trick? Like, how do I position myself so I can create two similar triangles? So, like, make the line go all the way. Okay, I'll make the line go all the way. And then you put orange in the middle. You put what? Where the person is. What? Yeah. Where the person is. You just draw a line? Sure. Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> How do I measure the height of that line? It's about as hard as measuring the height of the building. Really? It's got a giant ruler that's like 30 times bigger than you. Drew? Uh, measure the distance from the building to the end of the shadow. What, the what shadow? Building? Shadow of the building. Yeah. In the okay, so there's the shadow of the building. So yeah, but you me measure, measure from there yeah. to there. Okay. Um, so we measure all that. Okay. Then what? Whatever you get from that. Okay. Then I forgot. Okay. Don't you measure the the distance between you and the building, and then you look and look? I don't know. Is it like my? Uh, well, keep in mind, I never said that I had to keep standing there. I can move. Yeah, yeah. Uh, See, that's well, what I, I said. said. Move the person. That is what I was saying. You were saying move the person. Yeah. You have to walk it back to the walk, 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 walk. walk. To where? Into to the, the end of the shadow. Into just the into the light. light. Oh, to the end of the shadow. Oh, just stand at the end of the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. No. Just stand right there. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. no, no, no. Like what? Like, like your shadow would like shine down the triangle. Oh, so like my shadow meets, meets up, the end of my shadow meets up with the end of the building shadow. Yeah. Yeah. So I would walk out and I would, I would see the end of the shadow of the building and like just as I see my head appear in the oh, shadow. Right. Like measure, back a little measure, bit. measure how long your shadow is, yeah. and then walk that. How tall you are. That. Oh, yeah. just measure how long your shadow is, and then you're standing out here in the sun. You know? In the sun, and then walk back, and then walk back that many feet at the big, from the Ooh, beginning. Oh, that's, that's very precise. Okay. Oh, it's a little yeah, I like it. So do I even need to stand here? No. No. If I measure the shadow. If I measured my shadow? No, no, no. 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 
he already has so it. So I don't even need to. I don't even need to be right there. I could be right here. Then I've got a shadow. And because the sun is so far away, how far away is it? Oh, 90, yeah. 90 million miles. Ninety-three million miles, ninety-four million miles, give or take a million miles. Uh, Only a million. So you stand here. You measure your shadow. You know how you how tall you are, right? And uh, you make a tiny little triangle. So you measure your height and you measure your shadow, and that's a similar triangle to the building shadow, which you can also measure, and the building's height. Yeah. So do you? Oh, wait. Do uh, you divide your height by the, the shadow's height by your height? Shadow by my height. The shadow no. by my no. your, your shadow. My shadow. By your height. By your height. Oh, we could do that. We could do uh, little shadow, little height. Little shadow divided by little height. Equal to? Big shadow. Big shadow. Big shadow. Big shadow. Big shadow. <laughs> That would, it would also be the same as if I took a uh, big shadow or a little shadow equals big height or a little height. That would work. Also true. Or big height over little shadow, or little height over little shadow, big height over big shadow. Like all of those things are just going to each other. So you guys have heard cross multiply and divide. Yeah. Cross multiply. Yeah. Okay. So, could x over 2 equals 5 over 12? And then right over. Yeah. You're probably right about that. I would like it for your own sake, like not just because I'm some weirdo who likes you to think the way I do, <laughs> okay? but for your own sake so that you don't have a bag of tricks, you have like a, a body of knowledge. You understand actually what's happening. It, it does come out to be 5 times 2 over 12. But if we think of it just a half a second longer and think, I, what I'm really doing there is multiplying by 2 on both sides, canceling up the 2 here, rounding up with the 2 over 1 times the fraction over there. So x equals 10 over 12 equals uh, 5 over 6. And what about, though, if I had 7 over x? equals 12 over 35. Say what? Divide by 7, divide by 7. Divide by 7, divide by 7. I'll multiply by 1, 7. It's all the same thing. Good. OK, so on this side I have 12 over 35 times 7. I don't know what that is. You want to calculate around. You guys want to just, uh, it's 49 times 5. Forty-five. Two forty-five. Four twenty. Four twenty. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was off. I wonder how I got that off. Forty-nine. I got it. You got it. Oh. Anyway, now, okay. So we have twelve over four hundred twenty on this side. What do we have on this side? X. Yeah. That's somebody who thinks X. What? One. I canceled that to 7. I didn't just transport the x out of the denominator. Right. Well, that's good. I mean, like, x is kind of on its own on one side, but it's in the denominator. What can we do about that? Uh, your reciprocal of x. Is that? Oh, yeah, reciprocal. Yeah. Reciprocal of what? Of 1x. Oh, reciprocal of 1x? Reciprocal of 1 over. Like, 1x. One Reciprocal, so x over 1. Oh, multiply by x over 1? I like this idea. Yeah, can you simplify? <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. You can. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What do we have on this side? Zero. Uh, zero. X. One, one. Zero. It's one. It's one. And what is 12 over 420 simplified? Uh, 12 over 425. 12x over 25. 1 over 35. I don't yeah, know what you're saying. 
That's what I thought. <laughs> Not more than 20. No. Just like, okay. That's pretty large. That's really funny. Who said two? Two. Jesus. Would it be 12 like back soda? Sure. 20 20 20 20 20 20 well, I'm just asking what 12 over 245 is going to simplify that. Actually, that's a big simplifier. Well, you could because 3 goes to 15. Alright, I guess we're, we're not ready for that yet. So 12 over 245 times x, right? Because x is really x over 1, that's the same thing. All right, I've got x not in the denominator anymore. How would I get rid of this 12 over 245? Is it like, yeah. Divide it? How do I divide 1 by 12 over 245? It's difficult, so you do 1. Taylor Swift? 1 times 245 over 12. Right, so we have x equals 245 over 12. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. Well, I nobody was answering me when I said what's the simplified version of 12 over 25. Oh, I asked yeah. you what was the simplified version. Are they both? What are they both divisible by? Two. No. No. Nothing. I don't think they do. No, I don't. Because it's the five that's at the end. But it's got again two and three. Three and three. Basically two and three, and then multiples of two and three, which would have to have two and three as factors. So this doesn't have two or three as a factor, so it's just 12 or 245. Uh -huh. Well, I like the way you guys are doing this. You're all thinking, not just cross multiply and divide. You're thinking, cancel things out. Get x by itself. Yeah, I like the cancel. Now, if you cross multiply and, and solve that way, you're not wrong. But you are maybe relying on your memory and not on your understanding. Let's see how we do it though. Is this what the whole work is? Proportional.